lanolin bleach. That's right. So what does the acid washing actually do to the hammers? Any guess? Seems like it would dry it out. Okay. Stiffen it. Yeah, you're both right. It shrinks the felt. Mm -hmm. Makes the hammer much more dense. It actually shrinks the felt. And then it also removes the lanolin. Mm -hmm. The lanolin is a natural grease that's in the wool. Right. Okay, and that allows the wool to be more elastic. That's why your older hammers, when they're shaped right and everything's done on them, if you ever get to hear a comparison, gosh, they sound good. So, <clears throat> what can we do about this? We could do something about it. You know, what we could do is we could try to put lanolin back in. That's not going to get you very far. There's no way that you can inject it. And it's a grease. Mm -hmm. It's not like it has a grease fitting. So that isn't going to work. So let's look at this. So if it has lanolin in the hammer, and look, remember what the shoulders are designed to do, how it expands, right? So you tell me, if you got lanolin in a hammer, what's it going to do whenever it hits the string and compared to one that doesn't? It bounce better. There you go. you got more efficiency in the bounce of the hammer, which is going to show up in the sound of the piano. So what happens if the strings are on, or I'm sorry, let's, what happens if the hammers make contact with the strings too long? What would happen? Dampens the sound. There you go. There you go. So what would that sound like? What would that sound like? Just use your imagination just for a second. What would that sound like if the, if the hammers were on the string too long? To me, it's that antique piano sound. Okay, such as? What what's actually happens to the tone? Deadens it. It's okay. Less okay. sustained. And How about, okay, you've got an attack, right? It hits the attack, but it's on too long, so immediately it's dampening oh, at the okay. same time. So it drops immediately, and then all of a sudden, your sustain levels out because your hammer's finally away from the string. Let's find one that really demos this. That's a pretty good one. Let's see if we can find better one. All right, that's, this goes immediately. See how it's just, it kills it the second that it hits it. Mm -hmm. But when, you, when you're not a technician, you don't think of terms like this. So you, you're, what we're doing is we're dissecting the tone. And we want to see what is that hammer doing to where we can make it really better. So it's just dead. See, the hammer is on the string too long. It's actually killing. So what happens the opposite direction? Now this is, gets more tricky and you've got to really, really stretch yourself to understand this. Let's say that the hammer escapes the string too quickly. What would the result be? There's higher partials. Everything. You'd hear the higher partials. Higher partials. The okay. fundamental wouldn't be very pre predominant. That's correct. What else would happen? What would happen with the sustain? Mm -hmm. I don't It'd know. Similar mm -hmm. effect, wouldn't it? It would. It would, but why? And the reason I'm asking questions is I don't ever want you to forget. If I just pour information, you're not going to remember this stuff. It doesn't put, impart enough power into the string. Well, there's an element of truth to that, but here's a little bit more specifically of why this happens. It goes back to the partial spectrum. The fundamental's not there so much. You get this higher ping, okay? Now what's happening is you got all those crazy partials happening at one time. The string's just going nuts canceling itself out. That's what's happening. So if the if the hammer's on the string too long, you got sustain that goes like this. Okay? If it's on too short, you also, but it sounds different, have sustain that also goes like this. The difference is how you're hearing the tone. That's where it tells you now we're getting into what you have to do, the tip of the hammer, the crown of the hammer, okay? 
So what you would hear in this case would be your tone would actually ping. The pinging that you're hearing is killing the sustain and the strength. Absolutely killing the sustain. Okay, so what we want to do is balance everything out and make it right. Now, it's easy to think for somebody that doesn't do voice or doesn't understand these concepts. Okay, it's too soft. I'm just going to harden the tips. But what they're ignoring, they're ignoring that this is happening. Okay? And if you ignore it, that happens, you only harden the tips. Yeah, you're going to get a little bit brighter tone. But you're still going to have sustain that, that inclines like that. So that's why you have to work the shoulders generally first, generally first. But if you can't tell, if the tone is so bad you can't really tell what it's doing, go ahead and work the tips a little bit. And then after a while you get experience where you can almost always do the shoulders first. So what, what do we know by this piano then? What are we going to do to this? Let's listen to the rest. I mean, it's, it's going pretty quickly, but I think it could be a lot better. There you go. Look at yeah. that. It's just dead. Yeah. Dead. Dead. By the way, this is not strike point issue. We already corrected the strike point. We've got the action in the right spot. Uh, in this case, we actually had to sand down playing down the back of the action to be able to get it in far enough. It's, it's absolutely optimized. I'll show you real quick. That's it. Right where the cheek blocks go. Just right there. Didn't move. Okay? So, um, we tuned this a little bit yesterday. It needs more, but it's at least good enough so we could hear what this thing is going to be doing. Okay? So, let's listen to the rest of the piano. We've got... We've got sustain. Well, here's what we really want. Ideally, you want sustain that's going to be even, progressively uh, decays all the way down even. So, is that one kind of like doing this? Well, some of Aaron's out of tune, phasing, you know. It'll sound like that. Pretty can you tune a unison so we can hear it, hear it in tune? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this one, it's pretty good there. I definitely hear that one. It seemed like it kind of went like this and then like and then that. And all of a sudden it levels out and keeps going and yeah, going and going. Yeah, yeah. So that's what you listen for in voicing. This tells you everything that the hammer's doing with the shoulders. Let's get into some bass strings. That one could did it. Yeah. The other ones were okay, right? Yeah, the other ones weren't so bad. Yeah. Weren't so bad. What I normally do with the bass, whenever it comes to the tips, you work from the center and work your way out. If you get this right, you can get everything else to line up to it. You just have to make sure that everything's even as you go across. So we're what we're still going to do, since we know this is a global problem, we're going to spray all the way across. I'm going to spray all the way across these, um, these shoulders. We're going to get them to start expanding. Here's the formula that I use. We're going to use all fabric softener. We're going to use, this is pretty near 100% alcohol. It's 95%. If you taste it, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're really going to soften these. I want a classical tone out of the piano. And we want much better sustain. We're going to get more of a bell-like tone out of the piano. Go ahead and record me doing arpeggio.
looks like you're doing one third the softener and two thirds alcohol if you went up to the line. Yeah, that makes sense. So one to three. Gotta shake it real good. Uh, the next day, it's gonna sound a little bit differently than the day that you did it. That's just gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But you can predict it. Once you've done this enough, you could say, okay, this is gonna be a little bit softer tomorrow. I'm gonna leave the piano a little bit brighter today. Because voicing is always a process. Always, always a process. You cannot do it all in one setting. It's just impossible. Um, and if you do it with needles and say, yeah, I could do it all in one setting, well, after a little time of beating on it, it's just going to change because those holes are going to start to fill in. Because the felt has to go somewhere on impact. Hammers are made to expand. And so that expansion is going to start filling those holes in. Is this making sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's spray these and we're going to see what we got. Okay. I know it. This is a good one. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Listen to the difference. What do you play like, Dino? Now it's pretty soft, right? Yeah. Now we're going to work on the tips. that D sharp? Wow. 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 That's still kind of it's doing it. still kind of it. doing yeah. that, but that may it's not better. be the hammer. It may not be. The other thing is, too, remember, these are also too soft in the tip now. Mm. We're going to bring those up now. So that's what we're going to work on next. We're going to harden the tips, and that's where we're going to start bringing the piano back to life like it's never had before, and I mean never, never. So you go from, from one extreme to the We're other We're going from extreme. one extreme to the other, and it's going to balance it out. It's going to be amazing. Wow. Here's the thing. Here's the rule, okay? If they're acid-washed hammers, you can automatically assume that the shoulders are too hard. It's just... It's an absolute. It's an absolute. They all need done. They all do. In order to get them to sound like the old hammers that have the, um, the landlin in them, it's the only way that you could do them. It takes, it does take more to do 
this would have already been really close. So this is definitely weaker. <clears throat> now this area here. So that's a, that's a spray and play. Oh, which one did you want? Spray and play harder. <laughs> play, spray harder. And play harder. Play yeah. harder. Okay. But these are done here. So I'll show you what we do with. See this one. Brighter than that, that's for sure. And then it gets weak. That one's okay. So we have some spots where we could raise the hammers up and not spray them, you know? I'll give you a suggestion whenever you do the bass strings two full turns instead of one. We do. Oh, okay. We do one and we do one on the unis and two on the buys. Oh, okay. All right. No. You didn't. One. Uh. Okay. That'll give you a little more zing. That'll give you more Wait. zing. Wait. You're saying to turn them twice? Twice. Them yeah. Yeah. Twice. Usually we do twice on the buy courts. You never have me do that. You always have me do once. Mm hmm. Twice. That's the way I used to do it. That's the way oh, I did them. Twice. They, they, they zing better. A lot better tone. A lot better tone. Okay. I do them on the singles too. That way. They just got a real nice thunderous bass to them. And I, all the way across. Twice. Try it. to go. Yeah. Now yeah, it's starting to see here here's something that's very interesting. Your ears want to hear just a slight distortion in music. Mm -hmm. A slight distort just a little bit of buzz. Just a little bit I'm not talking about an annoying ping now. There's a big difference between a ping and a buzz. You get the string to buzz, it's doing something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got some real life to it. You know, and you could do that without making it overly bright, too. You just want some power behind that, a little mm -hmm. punch behind it, you know? See, that got just a little bit of hum to it, you know, a little bit of buzz. Yeah, there it is, right there. How's, how's our D sharp doing? I think the tone's longer on that, huh? Oh, definitely. Okay, so I've got up to here. I'm going to say for sure we're going to take these out. We'll do the last three. I'm going to hit this again. See what we got. Now, here's another trick to this too. If eventually we put a lot of spray on and we're not getting just quite enough result, you can go ahead and spray the shoulders a little bit. That means that you got them just a little bit too soft. And what this will do, this will put a crust on it, but it will not go in past, it doesn't even go in like maybe a sixteenth of an inch, that's about it. And I've done tests on this stuff. Because it actually dries as it's filtering through. That little bit of a crest can help break through a little bit better. So things you do are reversible, you know. So, but we're not up to that point yet. We don't know what we have yet. I'm just saying you can do that. So, so I have a question. When you go up to a new uh, piano, like in a customer's home, and you hear a tone that does that, how do you distinguish whether that's caused by the shoulder or the tip? Depends how much money I need that day. <laughs> I can answer that. Hold on. What I'm going to do, just to get a little more firmness out of this, I'm going to knock these back down. I'm just going to do the shoulders now, just a little bit. In a firm... Remember, that's not going in deep. Right here. And what you do, if you flip your can over, you have only a few seconds before you're going to get gas in the 
in the nozzle, time it. There it goes, get some back again, and keep spraying. Okay, that's how you do that. There we go. So you're saying you had the shoulders too soft from the softener? Up here, okay. up here, definitely. Up here, definitely. A little bit. Um, I don't know for sure though, because I'm not used to using this type of spray. I know it's. I, I use it, but not often. Um, We're throwing you off your game. Huh? You are throwing me off my game a little <laughs> bit. So because it's not quite making them as hard as the other stuff, I'm just going to hit the shores a little bit to make it. We're going to get it there with this. I'm pretty so confident. Play, play about. Is the other one. Yes. Spray and play harder. Play harder. <laughs> play harder. Yes. Play harder. There it goes, just like new. Just yeah. like new. Trying to set me up for failure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Find the crown. Okay. Now do the base. Hold on. Base on me. Makes me nervous. You know, should I start down here probably? It don't matter. Go ahead. That hairspray right. smells different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. You know it what? Good. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Let's hit this again. I don't think it's going to be as strong as this other stuff. I just have that feeling. Oh, you have a that. feeling? Okay. That's all right. All right. Let's see what happens. enough spray on. I brushed out that other crap yeah, as but, much as but I could. Yeah, but I'm wondering if that made it sound bad because it had water in it. Oh, you know what I think it is? It's just softer. Mm -hmm. Whatever the crap, you know, it probably has some wax in it or some weird shit like that, you know, and then it just softened and it ends up doing the opposite of what we needed to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the wax will keep your hair a little bit firm, but it's not like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> We could get this down. Once you get it up, then you get it down with the tip, just a little bit. And I'll show you how to do that. And I know they're too hard. I that that one I felt right. Here. <laughs> like that ping. We gotta get the ping out. Balance and this has to be coming up. wet, go over it with the brush, I have to do it again, we're going to look, we'll see what happens. Oh, it 
sound it. Yeah, it's right on the edge of the bridge. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful with that one. I'll, well, I'll do it. I'll wait till tomorrow at this point. Now we got it somewhat close, manageable. Wait and see what's going to... Because anything now, we're just going to spin our wheels because it'll change overnight. Yeah. So at least you get an idea of what can be done with chemical voicing. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it's as well.